From Grayson County High School, the Cougars are back in town as they get ready to take on the Bethlehem Eagles. It's only the second all-time matchup between the Cougars and Bethlehem. Last time happening in 2019, teams are different, but Grayson looking to bounce back from a loss on Saturday. And a good, good evening and welcome here to Grayson County High School for tonight's coverage of Cougar basketball on K105. Sam Gormley here with you for the coverage of today's game between the three and two Grayson County Cougars and the one and three Bethlehem Eagles. Both teams had big district wins the last time that they were out. That was then, this is now. They had the opportunity to leave their own regions in play, which should be an exciting matchup. Coming up on our locker room show, we'll introduce you to both teams, talk to the head coach of the Cougars, Travis Johnston, and give you the keys to victory. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Plant is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Plant team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran and disability employer. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day. A movement toward life-saving resources. Movement toward advancing research and care. Movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Bethlehem Eagles are in town to take on the Grayson County Cougars. It's Bethlehem's first ever appearance here at Grayson County High School as the Eagles are coached by Brad Greenwell is in his first season with that record of one and three that Bethlehem has. Their leading scorer on the year is Nicholas Culver. The senior is averaging 14 and a half points, 6.8 rebounds a game. Isaiah Ballard, the six foot three senior, averages 11 and a half points, 7.8 rebounds. They have been without one of their best players this season, who I believe is right now standing at the logo in street clothes. I believe that is Nicholas Osborne. It's either, or Osborne might be the player who has it right now at the top of the key, but he has not played at all this season. Osborne last year, 14.4 points per game, not played this year, and if they get him back tonight, that is an interesting addition to this Bethlehem team. But again, they got that two-headed monster right now of Ballard and Culver, who can really shoot, and Ballard is a great athlete as kind of a wing stretch four, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, Grayson County had a big week last week going two and one. We'll take a break, introduce you to them after this. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. 
We are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're going to help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. Grayson County enters the record up three and two, one and zero oh in 12th district play last week. Two big wins on the road at Ohio County, 72 to 57 a week ago tonight. And then they defeated Edmondson County, 77 to 64 on Friday. And on Saturday they ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw in Adair County, and Adair County team is is a really really good basketball team. They lose 91 to 69 on the road. It's kind of one of those games that I. I you, you, you almost read into it, be, you know, you're going on the road, playing a really good team, less than 24 hours after a road win in a emotional district contest, you're without one of your best defenders, you're kind of, the, the odds are stacked against you, and it's interesting as to really how to read into that, uh, because I don't really know. I, it, it, it's tough to see as to what really is the correct answer in, in reading into it is, you know, did Adair County expose Grayson County in some ways, or do you just almost tip your cap and say, man, that's that's just a really good basketball team, and we kind of had some things going against us, and that's just basketball. And I, I don't really know the answer to that. I'm sure, it would be something that we can ask Travis Johnston. Uh, Jack Logston is the leading scorer for Grayson County, 21.2 points, 5.4 rebounds a game. Spencer Langdon, 16.6 and 3.4 points. And then you also have Caden Hanshaw. He has been playing really well over these past couple of games. 7.8 points, 3.8 rebounds. And Brody Armstrong, he had a great game, especially shooting the three against Adair County last time out. He's averaging just under 11 points a game. Great County coach by Travis Johnston. We'll take a break, talk to him, get his thoughts on the matchup after this. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we got to operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. 
We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping, helping neighbors. neighbors in communities around the world. When disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. Welcome back to the Locker Room Show here on K105. Sam Gormley now joined by the head coach of the Grayson County Cougars, head coach Travis Johnston. Coach, you the game against Adair County on Saturday. When you went back and watched it, does anything change based on the fact that you had to travel a long way after an emotional win, you were missing one of your best defenders, or do you think they really exposed some things for you? I, I don't think they exposed anything for us. I just think they're really good. <laughs> Their point guard is about as good of a high school point guard as you're going to find. And... Um, you know, last year he was a guy that just put his head on the floor or put his head down and, and took pull-up jumpers. Now he's running an offense and getting it where it needs to go and taking it when it comes to him, and, and he's really good, plus the Cochran kid. Um, and, and they started the game shooting lights out, and, and when you do that, when we're on the road against a good team, we're already a little bit tired, it kind of drained us a little bit. But I don't I don't think it exposed anything. I thought our offense was, was solid. Uh, I know against Bullet Central, I was pretty mad we gave up 86, but I wasn't near as mad at the 91 we gave up against them because uh, they made some tough shots and they're just really good. You mentioned after the game the past couple of times about Spencer being a scorer and not a shooter. What is the difference and how does he continue to make himself even more of a scorer rather than just the shooter that people think he is? Well, he shoots a better percentage from two than he does three. And it's not just like he's getting in there and getting wide open layups and things like that. He's he's creating off the bounce and, and raising up over people and, and making six, eight, ten footers, floaters uh, off the glass, right hand, left hand. And he just can just do it in a variety of ways. And um, that's just – that's really where he's – he's always had that, but – Last year, he knew his role was to come in and shoot, and he couldn't move near as well because he was hurt. And um, I, I think that's where he's obviously he's expanded his game a lot is just being a uh, being aggressive and just being a scorer at all three levels. You were without Landon on Saturday. You get him back. We talked after the game. I think it was on Friday about he how he's really good at the little things that don't necessarily pop up in the stat sheet, but especially on defense. What is it that makes him such a good defender? He just has instincts. He's quick. He's strong. He's not afraid of anybody. And uh, if you notice in the Edmondson County game, I think he ended up with five steals. Uh, and a lot of those were early, um, reading passes, getting his hands on balls. And, and you know, him and, him and Gage are, are pretty much the same as far as uh, being able to get us some extra possessions and being that good on defense. And, and, and they're just smart players. They know where to be, and, and they read the reports, and they know where the guy's going to go and, and all the things that go into being a good defender. Uh, those two have. About 45% of your shots this year, about 26 per game, have come from beyond the arc. Now, this is not a conversation we've really ever had because you've never really, since I've been here, had a team that can shoot as well as this team. Do you go in saying, hey, we need X amount per game, or does that change, or do you wish that number was higher, lower, or how do you read into that? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's it's more of we take the shots that we're good at. And, uh, you know, Zach Bratcher is one that comes to mind. He comes in the game, and uh, there's been two or three times where he'll shot fake an open three and drive in and shoot a 15-footed uh, contested floater. And that's where we're at the point where we're just saying, hey, shoot the three. I mean, that, that's your shot. That's what you're really good at. Uh, so we just kind of tell them to take what they give you. If they get layups, you get layups. If you get threes, you get threes. And, and we're just going to take what, what could be the best shot for us on that possession. Bethlehem's out without one of their best players, but they got a nice duo with Ballard and Cochran. What do you see from them? Um, well, I hope the Osborne kid's not playing because he's really, really good. Um, Ballard and what was Culver? Culver. I wrote down Cochran, but I don't think that's right. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, Cochran, I don't think Cochran's coming back from Adair County. I hope not. Uh, no, Culver, I think it's Culver. Number four and number two is yes, what I know him right as. Um, they're athletes. They're flat-out athletes. And, um, and, and you'll see it with ba the Ballard kid. Uh, I mean, he's out there and um, – in the hey dudes or whatever they call them, dunking it with ease, and um, they're both about six three, six four, and and then number four, he runs the point for them, and uh, they're just flat out athletes, and and when Osborne gets back, I do think that um, whether he is tonight or or whenever he is, um, he'll let them be able to play more to their strength, which is being athletes, and because uh, right now they're having to run some point and, and doing some other things. But uh, they're, they're a really good duo, and, and they're obviously bigger and more athletic than us, so they're going to give us some problems. Coach, good luck. More comes up in the locker room show after this. 
Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Platt is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Platt team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran and disability employer. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors, neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United Way. Way. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. <laughs> Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. Welcome back to Grayson County High School. Let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. First for the Eagles of Bethlehem. Senior, guard, or senior forward number two, Isaiah Ballard, averages 11.5 points, leads the team at 7.8 rebounds. Nicholas Culver, the senior guard, 14.5 points and 6.8 rebounds per game. Hayden Cook, he has six points and nine rebounds in three out of the four games that they played. Thomas Mudd, number 12, 3.8 points and 3.5 rebounds. And Emmanuel Cheek, he averages, he has seven points and five rebounds on the season for Bethlehem. Once more, that lineup is Ballard, Culver, Cook, Mud, and Cheek. For Grayson County, the starting lineup, freshman guard number two, Spencer Langdon, averages 16.6 .6 points and 3.4 rebounds per game. Gage Napier is the sophomore guard at five points and one rebound. Landon Haycraft back in the lineup after missing last game with a sickness. He averages three points a game. Brody Armstrong, the sophomore, averaging just under 11 points, and Jack Logston, the... Freshmen stand out 21.2 points per game. Once more, that lineup, Langdon, Napier, Haycraft, Armstrong, Logston. The assistant coaches are Brian Hill, Brett Johnston, Daryl Meredith, Ethan Meredith, and Mason Galloway. Head coach, Travis Johnston. Grayson in Bethlehem comes up next on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected.
Welcome to Grayson County High School and the Cougar Den for tonight's coverage of Grayson County Basketball on K105. They're announcing the lineups right now. Isaiah Ballard, Nicholas Culver, Hayden Cook, Thomas Mudd, and Emmanuel Cheek for Bethlehem and for Grayson County. It is Spencer Langdon, Gage Napier, Lane and Haycraft, Brody Armstrong, and Jack Logston. Grayson and Bethlehem comes up next on K105. Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Platt is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Platt team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran, and disability employer. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensboroehealth.org mammogram. Grayson County and Bethlehem making the trip here. It's Grayson County's first home game since the opening game of the season. Back two weeks ago tonight. It feels a lot longer than that, but the Cougs are back in town. And we are about ready to roll here between Grayson County and Bethlehem. They've only met one prior time. That was in 2019 at Campbellsville. Grayson County won that game 60 to 43, but that a uh, lot has changed. Between now and then, I guess the one similarity is Travis Johnston on the sideline for Grayson County. Bardstown Bethlehem, though, has a new head coach. The opening tip will be Jack Logston to jump against Isaiah Ballard. And it is up in the air and controlled by the Eagles of Bardstown Bethlehem. They'll be working from left to right on the radio dial, wearing the black jerseys with white numerals and a blue stripe up each side of the pant legs. As they enter with a record of one and three, they're coming in off of a district win last time out against Thomas Nelson, 54 to 21. Ironically enough, Thomas Nelson is Grayson County's next opponent. Floater in the lane on the right side is left a little short by Culver, rebounded by Grayson County. Here come the Cougars. And they'll push down the far side of the floor. Brody Armstrong off the right side, absorbs the contact. Basket good by Armstrong. Grayson County strikes first. They lead two to zero. Cougars coming out in their full court pressure. That has worked really well at times. And now we're going to have a foul in the backcourt called on Landon Haycraft. That'll be his first and the team's first here of this first quarter of play. Your officials for today's game, Chris Haney, Mike Berry, and Joe Jeffries will be donning the whistles for this evening's contest. Bethlehem has a new head coach this year. It is Brad Greenwell in his first season. He replaces Jordan Cooper Livers, who is now an assistant at Central Harden, a team that Grayson County will see later on this season. Right side, Cook gives it up top now to their leading scorer, Nicholas Culver. Cook back at the volleyball line to the right side to Cheek. Cheek, one of the smaller players on the floor. Only scored seven points all season. Bounce pass to the left wing to Cook. He'll let it fly, and it's off the back of the yard. Long rebound chased down by Culver, in the, or rather by Ballard in the near corner. Pass deflected, taken away. Langdon, he almost loses it, gains it back, almost loses it a third time. Gives it off to Haycraft. Haycraft off to the right side. Deep three, right side. Armstrong is short, and the rebound is chased down there by Ballard for Bethlehem. 90 seconds into the game, Grayson County on top, 2-0. to zero. Jump pass, far corner, driving the baseline, now giving it off to Ballard at the free throw line. Ballard off the right side, fades towards the baseline, shots missed, rebound bouncing around, and Armstrong's got it for Grayson. An outlet pass on the run out to Langdon, down the right side, good for Spencer Langdon. Grayson County on top, 4-0. to 6.08 left in the first quarter of play. Down the near side comes Cheek around Armstrong, and a foul on the floor is going to be called on Armstrong, his first team's second. The new head coach for Be Bethlehem is Brad Greenwell, 1993 graduate of Bethlehem, where he was twice named honorable mention All-State. He went on to play college basketball at Bellarmine University. On the right side goes Mudd, up top three, top of the key by Cook is off the back side, rebounded by Longston for Grayson County. Logston pushing up the far side of the floor. Wide open pass to the left side. Good for Spencer Langdon. Timeout, Bethlehem. 
seven to nothing. The Cougs are rolling early. 5.48 left in the first quarter of play. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. A 7-0 run for the orange and blue in Grayson County leads early on in this game. 7-0 with 5.48 left in the first quarter of play. Bethlehem takes that early timeout. Trying to find an answer for Grayson. They've been shooting a lot of threes early on. They don't make a lot of threes. It's down the left side. Trying to find help. Stripped and a foul is called on Grayson on the far side of the floor. Bethlehem only makes 4.8 threes per game. Now guarding the three is Langdon's the player that picks up the foul. His first team cert has been a weakness for Grayson. They allow 9.4 threes per game through the first five. Now that can be a little misleading because they've gone up against some teams that can really shoot the three. Adair County, a great shooting team. Bullet Central was unconscious when Grayson County played them a couple of weeks ago. And Ohio County made double digits threes as well in the game that Grayson County really dominated from the opening tip. Off to the left side, running at his cheek. No look pass, bounce back to Cook. Into the near corner to Mudd. Mudd is a freshman who can shoot. Mudd's got it in the corner. Left alone, crosses the cheek on the left wing, picked up by Langdon. Three early fouls on Grayson County. Three near side is missed. And on the floor, Culver's shot is picked up by Haycraft. Gives it off to Armstrong. Armstrong drives down the right side, picks up his dribble in the lane, and is blocked out of bounds. Rejected on the interior by Ballard for the Eagles. 5.04 left in the first quarter of play. 7-0 Grayson County. Leads Bethlehem. He launched into trigger from underneath of his own basket. Up top to Armstrong. Armstrong bounce pass into the near corner to Longston. Longston pulls up 18 feet near side. It's an air ball right into the hands of Haycraft. Flips it off to Langdon. Floater in the lane is blocked by Ballard, but a foul is going to be called on Bethlehem. It's called on Thomas Mudd. That is his first team's first, and Spencer Langdon will go to the line to shoot two. It's, it was not called on the block. It was called, I guess, on one of the sides of where Langdon was. He'll go to the line, and he misses the first free throw. Langdon only 63.2% from the line. He is a much better free throw shooter than that. He struggled over these past couple of games, and we've seen where he can really put it in. He misses both free throws there. This Grayson County team is an up and down year when it comes to free throws on the season. Top of the key, feeding it off into the far corner. Three by Mudd, good for Thomas Mudd. Mudd's only attempted three threes this season. He's made all of them now. Langdon, bounce pass inside, is kicked on the interior by Cook. And it's going to stay with the Cougars underneath of their own basket. 4.37 left in the first quarter of play. Grayson County leads 7-3. to three. They're going to pass it in from underneath of their own basket. Langdon scans, gives it up top to Napier. Napier bounce pass inside, not a good one. Taken away by Bardstown Bethlehem. Down the left side, the run out and the layup is good by Jack Bradley, who's into the game. Bradley, the freshman, is a good shooter, leads the team in three-point percentage. Grayson getting on the other end. Armstrong off the right side, somehow doesn't fall. Longstrom with a follow, he can't get it. Second chance for Armstrong, good on the right side. Armstrong's got four. That ends little 5-0 spurt for Bethlehem. Here comes Bradley down the near side, throws it up to uh, Ballard on the inside, and now it's spiked out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Bethlehem underneath. 9-5, 4-0-8 left in the first quarter of play. It'll be Armstrong to guard the inbounds. They give it into Ballard. Left wing Bradley, off to the right side to Mudd, back now to Bradley. He's 45% from three, and he airballs that one. And the inbounds pass is saved, and it taps off here to Haycraft. Grayson County's got numbers, working four on two. Haycraft at the left elbow, gives it off to Logston. Logston inside to Langdon on the right side is rejected by <laughs> there about three Bar uh, Bethlehem players that rejected it out of bounds, and it's going to stay with the Cougars underneath. Coming into the game, Ben Garrett, six foot three sophomore, 1.7 points, two rebounds a game. He didn't play in one of their games as Ballard will take a seat. Into the far corner to Napier, thought about the three, gives it outside now to Armstrong. 
Feeding it to the left block to Langdon, who gives the pass to a cutting Armstrong. And on the pass, Armstrong was fouled by number 11, Hayden Cook, his first team's second here of this first quarter of play. 9-5, Cougs on top, 344 left here in this opening quarter of play. Be Langdon to trigger from underneath of his own basket. Scans once, scans twice, gets it into Logston on the left block. Logston goes up, right side, basket good. He'll go to the line. He's fouled on the interior by Bethlehem. Foul called on Thomas Mudd, his second, team's third. And Jack Logston will go to the free throw line where he has been very, very good over these last couple of games. In the last three games, Jack is a combined 16 of 16 on the season, 89.3%. He'll try to convert on the end one here. Langdon took a seat. In for him is Kobe Martin. And Logston continues to be unconscious from the free throw line. 12 to five, Grayson County leads. The pressure and the trap comes and it's tapped over to the far side. And it's to Culver. Culver into the middle and a foul at the half court line called on Hayden Robinson, who's in for Grayson County. It's just Robinson's first team's fourth. Next foul will be free throws for the Eagles. 3.35 left in the first quarter of play. 12-5, Grayson County on top. Sam Formula here with you on the call on K105 and also live by K105 Digital Productions. Jacob Thornsbury is in for Bethlehem. He has it. Gives it off the left side to Culver. Top of the key, Bradley trying to find help. He was somehow keeping his balance. They're going to give it back as Hanshaw picks him up on defense. Free throw line, Bradley throws it down to Culver. Goes right through his hands and goes out of bounds. 316 left here in this first quarter of play. Grayson County on top by seven. They opened up the game on a 7-0 run. It's been even since that point. Now Bethlehem coming out in their 1-2-2 zone. This is what they like to run on defense. It has been successful at times this year. Gives it to Haycraft, cutting down the lane. Haycraft lets two defenders go by. Feeds it to Robinson. Robinson floater inside is short. Rebounded by Haycraft on the interior. Flips it off to Logson. Right side three. Got it. Another timeout taken by Bethlehem. 15 to five, Grayson County leads with two minutes and 56 seconds left in the first quarter of play. Jack Logston has got six points here in this first quarter of play. Spencer Langdon five, Brody Armstrong four. And that was just great ball movement. Landon Haycraft on the inside has been a rebounding machine. Coming back after he missed the last game with an illness against Adair County. And it's one of those, you look at the stats and you're saying, Sam, what? I mean, three points, two and a half rebounds, that's not a big loss. No, it is. Uh, he does the little things like we talked about in the open. A girls basketball final, Glasgow defeats Russellville 63 to 13. Boys basketball, Butler County all over Breck early at the end of the first quarter. 26 to nine at the end of the, of the first quarter of play. And girls basketball, Butler County leads Muhlenberg 43-37 at the end of the third. Edmondson up four on a dare in girls basketball. 15 to five. Grayson County leads Bethlehem in this game. Driving down the left side, free throw line jumper is in and out. Missed on the play by Cook. Longston picks up the loose board for Grayson County. 240 left in quarter number one. Martin over to the far side to Hanshaw. Ball fake, Hanshaw drives the baseline. Bounce pass to Haycraft in the near side. Acraft back off the left wing. Logston will let it fly. Left side. Got it. He knocked it down from Short Creek. A deep three for Jack Logston. He's got nine. And it's 18 to five with two minutes and 24 seconds left in the first quarter of play. Over the far side, Bradley guarded by Martin. Gives it back into the middle now. Off down to a cutting player. Bounce pass inside. Taken away by Logston. Logston feeds it off far side to Hanshaw. 18 to five. Grayson County on top. Hanshaw on the right wing to Martin. Back out to Hanshaw. Hanshaw splits the defenders. Feeds it off to Haycraft. 18 feet near side is short. Hits off the front of the rim. And rebounded on the floor by Cook for Bethlehem. Cook weaving through. Flips it off left side to Culver. Culver drives. No look pass to Ballard. Ballard drives from seven feet on the left side. Good on the little curl for Ballard to end the, ble the bleeding. It's Ballard's first points of the game. This allows two for Bethlehem to set up their one, two, two. Bethlehem is more of a team that wants to slow it down Grayson County, you've seen, they want to run. Robinson tried to feed it off to Logston. It was deflected. It's a good, it was a, the right decision there by Hayden. Zach Bratcher is going to come in in place of Landon Haycraft. It'll stay with Grayson. It'll be Bratcher, Hanshaw, Logston, Robinson, Martin on the floor for Grayson County. 
Hanshaw will do a handoff pass to Bratcher. Far side three is off the front of the iron. Martin with a rebound for Grayson. Gives it off left wing, Robinson. Robinson up top now to Logston. Immediately a hand goes in his face. Right side, Bratcher. Up top, pass taken away by Ballard. It's a run out. Ballard tries to dunk it. Didn't quite get high enough, but still lays it in. Ballard's got the last four points of this game. Racing Honey still doubled up Bethlehem with 110 left in the first quarter of play, 18 to nine. Looping off to Martin on the near side of the floor. Martin back now to Hanshaw. Right side. One, two, two zone pressure. For Bethlehem. Bounce pass right side, Hanshaw. Right side, Bratcher. Thought about the three, gives it in the far corner. Now back up top, Hanshaw. Hanshaw drives, bounce pass, and he walked with it, is the call. With 45 seconds left in the first quarter of play. 18 to nine, Greason County still leads by nine points. He couldn't quite get the pass off in time. Into the middle. It is to Ballard. Ballard gives it back off to Culver. In between the circles, 18-5, about 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Will Brad Greenwell hold for one shot, or will they go? Instead, it'll be a three left side. It's short. Rebound on the floor by Martin for Grayson County. Over to the far side to Hanshaw, and I got to imagine Grayson County will hold for the final shot unless they get something really good. 15 seconds left here in this first quarter of play. It is 18-9. Grayson County leads Bethlehem. Here comes a little bit of pressure with eight seconds. Logston gets a screen from Robinson off to the right side with five seconds. Logston drives, kicks to Bratcher, off to Robinson, left side three, it's an air ball. There to follow is Martin with the reverse layup, and it's good for Grayson County to beat the buzzer. And Grayson County leads Bethlehem 20 to nine at the end of the first quarter of play. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we gotta operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Grayson County leads 20 to nine as we get ready to start the second half of play from Grayson County High School. Kobe Martin beats the buzzer there with a stellar play on the interior. Logston has nine points to pace the orange and blue of Grayson County. On the other side for Bethlehem, it is Isaiah Ballard with four to lead them, three for Mud, two for Bradley. We're underway here in this second quarter of plays. It's Langdon with a ball. He drives all the way around, curls it, kicks it to Robinson. Outside, deep right side, three by Bratcher. Is way too long off the back of the backboard. And it's rebounded by Bethlehem. They're coming up the far side of the floor to Hayden Cook. Bethlehem taking maybe more threes than they're necessarily used to. Inside the lane, fouled on the drive is Ballard. And Ballard is shaking his right hand. I hope he's okay. Now called on Hanshaw. It's only his first. Team's first here of the second quarter. Ballard to the line, 52.6% on the season. And the first one is no good. Ballard, an excellent athlete. Leading receiver on the football team. Listen to this line right here. 49 catches for 810 yards and five touchdowns. Which, you know, you're thinking, okay, he's a good basketball player and a good uh, football player. That's a pretty good athlete. Oh yeah, and then he's also a state champion in the high jump last year in 1A in the state of Kentucky. Pretty good athlete. Makes that second free throw. Grace County up 20 to 10. Langdon loses the ball on the drive on the inside. We're gonna have a jump ball. They'll give the ball back here to Bethlehem. 7.25 left in this first half of play. Langdon almost just went just a little bit too quick on that drive. 
Pass almost taken away. Trying to gamble on it and steal it was Robinson. Down the right side, the flip shot is missed by Ballard. Rebound, Bratcher flips it off now to Robinson. Robinson realizing he doesn't have numbers, gives it back to Bratcher. Bratcher back to Robinson. Robinson's blocked off the backboard. Rebound goes off the hands of Ballard, and it's going to stay with Grayson County underneath. 7-11 left to the first half of play, 20-10. to Grayson County leads. Give it off to Armstrong, into the corner, Langdon, three, up, three, good for Spencer Langdon. His second three of the game, he's got eight. And it's 23 to 10, ball knocked around, it rolls, diving after, and it is a jump ball. As the ball was rolling and Ballard was laying on his back and he had two Cougars on each side of him. Honestly, I think that's good officiating by Mike Berry, the official. You're, just, just call it a jump ball. Like, you're not going to get a pass off. If anything, you're going to get a foul. Just call it a jump ball and let, let, let's keep playing. I, I like that officiating. You've seen that a lot. Try to speed up the game a little bit as well. Hanshaw on the left wing. On the zone, breaks it to Armstrong into the corner to Langdon. Heat check three is off the back of the iron. Rebounded by Bratcher, but his foot was on the line. And the ball will head back towards the Eagles. Limping a little bit after the play is Nicholas Culver. The leading scorer for the Eagles. He's not putting much weight on that left leg at all. Not sure if his head coach, Brad Greenwell, has realized that or not. Cook, bounce pass to the right side and fouled. Is it before the shot by Ballard? I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to see after the call. Robinson's going to pick up the foul. That's his second, team's second. It is going to turn into be two shots for Isaiah Ballard. Full-fledged of substitutions will come in for Grayson County. As Logston didn't start that second quarter, probably give him a little bit of a breather. Two shots for Ballard. First one is no good. If there is a weakness on this Bethlehem team, it is absolutely free throw shooting. 55.1% from the line on the year. Not great. Haycraft, Napier, and Logston all come in for Grayson County to join Armstrong and Langdon. The second chance. Pops in, out, and then drops in for Ballard. Ballard's got six points. It's 23 to 11. Grayson County leads Bethlehem with 6.30 left in the first half of play. Logston to the free throw line. Napier, Napier tried to fire it over to the far side, and it's taken away. Here comes a run out to Cheek on the left side. Fa fouled by Grayson County. Blocked by Logston on the shot. We'll see who this foul's on. If it's on Langdon or if it's on Logston. I think it's on Langdon. It is. For Langdon, that's going to be his second. Team's third. Two shots going to come for Emmanuel Cheek. He is one of two from the stripe this season. First shot is no good, backside. Chase Bonnock is gonna come into the game for Grayson County. Bonnock has eight points and one rebound. It's Bonnock three of five shooting from the field this year. Also played shortstop on the baseball team. Second chance good there by Cheek. They've at least been consistent all three of their trips to the free throw line, they've missed the first and made the second. 23, of 23 to 12, Grayson County in control of this game early. Napier on the right side into the far corner to Haycraft, bounce pass to Armstrong. Armstrong spins on the right block, tries to go up, and it is spiked back into the turf by Bethlehem. Back out to Napier, Logston lets the defender go by, kicks into the corner to ball knock. Three, near side is off the back side, rebounded by Ballard. Ballard flips it off now to the guard, Hayden Cook. An outlet to the right side to Culver, who is then fouled by Grayson. He called on Bonnock. That'll be his first. Team's fourth. It'll stay on the floor. This is really the first true varsity experience we've seen for Chase. He has, you know, come in late in games at times, but you heard Travis Johnston talk it was either after the Adair game or after the Edmondson game saying he needed to get Chase more minutes. That he might be small, but he's a great athlete. Spinning around, shot up the far side, is missed. Rebounded by Logston. He thought about the run out, realized he didn't have space. Instead, loops it off to Armstrong, who's got space down the left lane. Defender behind him fouls him. I think they're going to call this on Ballard. If it is, that'll be his first. No. Yes, it is. It is on Ballard. I thought, I thought they were calling that on number five, Jack Bradley. Instead, he changed his mind. Instead, it was on Ballard. Armstrong to the stripe. 
53.8% on the stripe on the season, and the first one is good. Brody was pulled up to the varsity roster last season. He was somebody that Travis Johnston admits that really wasn't on his radar of being a guy that could have been pulled up to varsity last year, and he played so well in JV that he left him no choice, and now he's starting as a sophomore. This is the second free throw. Cook has it in the corner for Bethlehem. Swings it off left side to Cheek. Cheek into the far corner, Bradley. Back out now to Cheek at the volleyball line. Right side, Culver feeds it inside to Ballard. It's off his hands, then bounces right back into it. Off the left side, layup missed by Bradley. Armstrong with a rebound, and then is foul. Somehow that ball got back into the hands of Bethlehem. What the foul called on Bradley, his first team's second of this second quarter of play. 23-12, Grayson County leads. 5-10 left in the first half of play. Offense has slowed a little bit for Grayson, only three po or four points in this second half of play. Up top to Napier, onto the right side, into the far corner now to Armstrong. Up top to Haycraft, volleyball line, ball knock into the corner, Napier three is up and it is long. Rebound saved in by Armstrong, no it wasn't. His foot was on the line. I don't believe the scoreboard is correct. I believe it should be 24 points for Grayson County. That's what our scoreboard has. The scoreboard here at Grayson County High School has it as 23, but I trust our director, Trey Cook, and myself. Armstrong gets the steal down the left lane, shots up, good, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Brad Greenwell wanted a charge. Foul called on Culver, his first, team's third, and Armstrong will go back to the stripe. And it is no good. Missed there by Armstrong. He's one of three from the free throw line. Grayson County leads this game 26 to 12. Top of the key, three by Culver is missed. Ballard's put back is no good, but he's fouled on the inside by Jack Logston. For Logston, his first, team's fifth. Ballard back to the line to shoot two. Ballard will have two shots. First one, nothing but net there for Ballard. Ballard gets the shooter's roll on the second one. And just like it is 26 to 14 now with 4.28 left in the first half of play. Napier to the free throw line to Armstrong, into the corner to Bonnock. Off to the left side, Napier. Napier feeds it off to Haycraft. Haycraft back outside now to the right wing to Logston. The Bethlehem fans are trying to come to life to cheer on their team. Up top to Napier, off to the right side to Logston. Logston left alone from the volleyball line, and it's an air ball of a three attempt. A little bit of a heat check there for Jack Logston. Travis Johnson is wondering what that was. Culver down in the near corner, gets away with a walk. Off to the right side, pass bobbled, gives it back now to Culver. Crossing it inside, Armstrong had a hand on it, and goes into the hands of Haycraft for Grayson. Outlet pass to Armstrong, he couldn't corral it. Now looping it off to Bradley. Bradley with a run out, right side layup good for Jack Bradley. The ball must have been rolled in some hot grease or something beforehand, because it's slipping left and right for both of these teams. Haycraft up the far side, timeout. Taken on the floor by Grayson County. 3.36 left here in the first half of play. It is 26 to 16, Grayson County on top. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Grayson County leads 26 to 16 with three minutes and 36 seconds left here in the first half of play. I know I brought it up to the scorebook right now. I have it as 26-16. Our very talented director, Trey Cook, has it as 26. There you go. I gave him his compliment for today. He'll owe me five bucks later. He doesn't know that, but we're out of the timeout. 3.30 left in the first half of play. 
Just want to make sure I'm not going crazy. Inside to Haycraft. Gives it off into the near corner to Napier. Off to Logston. Let's the defender go by. Pulls up. 10 feet left side. A little long. And Bradley comes down with a loose board there for Bethlehem. Taps it off. An outlet comes down to Culver. Culver picks it up. Bounce pass back outside. They leave Cook alone from three. And Cook makes him pay. Second three of the game there for Bethlehem. And just like that, they've made it interesting. Hanshaw back into the game for Grayson County. Clips it off to Logston. Free throw line, Napier. Napier to the corner to Haycraft. Back outside now, Logston. Off to Hanshaw. Hanshaw does a little ball fake. Gets to Martin on the right side. Back out to Hanshaw. Hanshaw back to the in-between the circles to Napier. Hanshaw running the point to Martin. He'll take the three. Pulling up right side. It is in and out. Rebound bouncing around. And it is picked up on the floor there for Bethlehem. 26-19, 2.35 left in the first half of play. Left wing driving in, jump pass into the near corner, tapping it off, three right side is missed by Cook. Rebound on the floor, picked up there by Grayson County. An outlet pass comes up to Haycraft, spinning around to Napier, cutting down the right lane. Napier on the right side, basket's good. Napier's first points of the game. Grayson County back up by nine. Here comes a run out for Bethlehem on the other side. Layup good down the left side by Valor. Not good defense by Grayson getting back. That was way too easy. 28-21, Grayson County up a touchdown. Hanshaw flips it over to the far corner to Martin. Back outside to Logston, deep three, top of the key. It's in and out. Rebound taps off into the air, and it's picked up there on the floor by Baller. Baller then is ripped up on the floor, a jump ball, and possession is going to go towards Bethlehem. Kate Hanshaw had it wrapped up and was fighting over and players hit the deck after the play. Twenty eight twenty one, one fifty to go. Trap in the backcourt. Bethel breaks it with a pass now to Ballard. Ballard crosses, almost taken away by Grayson. Coming down is Bradley and he's fouled on the floor. It's not gonna matter, it's gonna be two shots anyways. Bratcher will be the player called for the foul, his first. Doesn't matter if it's a shooting foul or on the floor. Anyways, it'll be two shots for Jack Bradley. Bradley, three of four from the line on the young season. Make that four of five. That's one of the higher percentages on the team, albeit very limited action. Langdon back in for Grayson. He hasn't played much of this second quarter after picking up his second foul. Second one. Missed short. Longston with the loose board there for Grayson County. 28-22. Grayson County leads 135 left in the first half. Langdon in the lane. Down the right side. Seven-foot shot is a little long, and the Cougars have gone ice cold from the field here in this second quarter of play. Culver on the right wing, guarded by Bratcher. Gets around Bratcher at the free throw line, spins towards the middle. Shot is up. Good for Culver. Bethlehem has brought this game to within four now. Outlet to Martin. Martin spinning down the lane, off the right side. It's ripped and taken away by Bradley. Bradley right up the middle, gives it to Culver, down the right side. Blocked by Longston, but it still goes in. It is a two-point game now, 28-26, to 26, with one minute left in the first half of play. Logs into the free throw line to Hanshaw. Hanshaw drives down the right side and is fouled by Bethlehem. Brad Greenwell didn't agree with it, but uh, it was absolutely a foul. Foul called on Ben Garrett, his first, team's fourth. Two shots coming for Caden Hanshaw. Hanshaw coming off of a 17-point per point performance against Adair County on Saturday. He has made two-thirds of his free throws this year, and that one pops out. Brody Armstrong comes back in for Grayson County. And it'll be Langdon out in his place with 54.8 on the clock. It is 28-26 Grayson County, at least by my count. The scoreboard uh, reads here at the building. Now 29-26 as Hanshaw makes the second free throw. Trapped in the backcourt. Feeding over to the far side, deflected, taken away by Bratcher for Grayson County. Off to Hanshaw in the far corner with 45 seconds left in the first half of play. Hanshaw double teamed to Logston. Into the near corner to Bratcher. Back outside now to Logston. Logston free throw line Armstrong. Back off to Hanshaw on the right side with 35 seconds. Down to Logston, wide open on the right block. Logston spins around, going to get his easiest basket of the game. He moves into double figures with his first points of the second half. Armstrong gambles on the steal and fouls Bethlehem. For Armstrong, his second, and that'll be two shots coming for for uh, uh, it'll be uh, they're going to give it to Ballard. 
Ballard's seventh and eighth points, or seventh and eighth free throw attempts of the game will come right now. A couple of subs will come in and makes it. Bounces off the back of the iron, bounces straight into the air, and then drops through the basket. Cheek comes back in, as will Clark for Bethlehem. I think it's the first time we've seen Clark today. He's got two points, three rebounds. Only well, up to one shot from the field. He's two of two on free throws. Second chance. Good. Makes both free throws. He's made five straight now. And it is 31-28. Grayson County leads. 24 seconds left in the first half of play. Langdon will hold it, and Grayson County's going to hold for the final shots. 14 seconds and counting to Langdon, back on that right side. Langdon lowers the shoulder, falls, is able to keep his dribble going. Inside the lane, the shot, good! He gets the roll with five seconds left in the half. They give it up to the near side of the floor. Cook throws it up from three-quarters court. He had plenty of time to continue to drive. He doesn't, and the shot falls well short. At the half, Grayson County leads 33-28. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensboroheath.org slash mammogram. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where it is 33 to 28, at least by my count. i got to count out my book here because our scoring's a little different, so we'll have to figure out what it is here at the half. But great first quarter, not a great second quarter. It's been the story really for both of these teams. It's, it's just been flipped. Uh, Bethel got off to a not great start. Grayson County got off to a good start, and then the sides just flipped. In that second quarter of play, Jack Logston leads the way for the Orange and Blue with 11 points. Coming up on our halftime show, we'll run down some scores from around the region, the scoring from this game, and get you ready for the second half of play. Again, your score at the half, Grayson County leads Bethlehem, as this is Cougar Basketball on K105. Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Platt is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Platt team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran and disability employer. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches, it encourages, it builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. National Weather Service has issued a warning as it monitors the storm. Those in the following counties are fortunate to see. Convoy of Hope is ready to help you prepare for the next storm. Visit convoy.org slash prepare. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we gotta operate now. It just all changed. Life changed. 
Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where Grayson County leads 33 to 28 at the half against Bethlehem. We'll bring down some scores from around the region. Here's one that comes through that I see here that has interest really to, I mean, if you're a Bethlehem fan, I assume you're interested in it. Adair County leads E-Town 45 to 29. Looks like early in the fourth quarter there as that game is happening in Columbia tonight. Grayson County saw that Adair County team a couple of weeks uh, on Saturday, and uh, I, I know I went away with saying if there's a better team in the fifth region, I'd like to meet them. And E-Town has been presumed to be that number one team in the region, and Adair County is putting it on them there in Columbia tonight. Uh, at boys basketball at the half, Caverna leads LaRue County 42-36. Uh, Nelson County leads Thomas Nelson in boys 28-16 at the half. Butler County in girls defeats Muhlenberg County 56-47. Uh, boys score at the half. McLean leads Apollo 21-15. Butler County leads Breck 50-28. That score is at the half as well. Uh, Edmondson County gets by Adair County 51-46 to as a final score as well of that game. And that appears to be most of the scores that I have to bring you as I do the scroll through right now. Your score here, at least by my count, is Grayson County 33, Bethlehem 28. We'll take a break and run down the scoring from this game after this. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. I'm not here to fire you up. If you're not already fired up, you shouldn't be in this room. If this victory isn't worth all you have to give, then leave. But now, right now is your chance to be a part of a victory the world will remember forever. Victory over cancer. This victory isn't just happening. It isn't inevitable. What does hope mean? Now is our time, your time. You may save someone you love. Time is very precious. Today's cancer research is tomorrow's victory, a victory that is there for the taking. Grab it. How was that? Now that was a great halftime speech. Let's go win. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Some days are just better than others. I think you should go talk to someone. It's not that easy. Have you been thinking about suicide? You can talk to me, Dad. It's been a tough couple of months. For the more than one million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where we're still trying to figure out what the score is. I went down there and I, I don't know who's right. I, I don't know. Uh, I, we got to go by what the official scorebook says, and that is 32 to 28. So I guess we will change our score to reflect what they say. I, I, I don't know. We'll have to go see. Hopefully this game doesn't come down to one point so it doesn't particularly matter. 
Uh, 10 points for Spencer Langdon, 11 for Jack Logston, 7 for Brody Armstrong, 2 each for Kobe Martin and Gage Napier, 1 for Caden Hanshaw. Uh, for uh, Bethlehem, it is 12 for Isaiah Ballard, 5 for Jack Bradley, 4 for Nicholas Culver, 3 each for Hayden Cook and Thomas Mudd, and 1 for Emmanuel Cheek. That is the scoring from the first half of play in this game. As again, Grayson County leads, that's what the scoreboard says, 32-28. to 28. They're leading regardless whether it's 4 or 5. Hopefully, if you're wearing the orange and blue, it doesn't particularly matter as to what the deficit is once this game goes along. As it is, Grayson County on top of the half. Second half comes up next here on K105. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is one 833 KY help. Call for the resources. They're going to help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. Grayson County leads here in the second half of play. Again, we're gonna go by what the official scoreboard and scorebook says 32-28. Someone's going crazy, and I guess more than likely it's me. But uh, we're underway here in the second half of play. Grayson County's up. They'll have the ball working now from left to right on your radio dial. Up top to Napier, in between the circles, into the corner to Langdon. Three is up, and I think was partially blocked on the play there by Ballard, and it's rebounded on the floor by Bethlehem. And go out of bounds off of the Cougars. 13 seconds into this second half of play. Grayson County has the lead against Bethlehem. They do a bounce pass to Cook, speeding around. Cook loses it, and it's taken away by Armstrong. Armstrong up the far side of the floor, drives in, left side shot is left a little long. And it is rebound, and it is going to be foul shots coming here for Grayson County. Foul called on number 23, Emmanuel Cheek, his first, team's first. Armstrong will shoot two. He is one of three in the game. And the first one is good for Brody Armstrong. He's got eight points. And counting Brody coming off of a game at Air County where he was, he had 14 points, including four threes. And all four of his threes were from NBA range. He was feeling it that day. This is the second free throw, rebounded on the floor by Bethlehem on the far side of the floor. 33-28, Grayson County has the lead. Seven and a half left in the third quarter of play. Into the far corner. Off to the right side, Cheek. Top of the key now to Cook. Cook looked to get it to Culver. Grayson County in the 3-2 zone defense. In on Bethlehem. Grayson County looking to move to 4-2 on the year. Inside the lane, blocked by Logston, and he takes it right back, taking it away from Baller. Logston, an outlet to Napier. Napier to the corner to Langdon. Langdon has Logston all alone at the top of the key. They can't find him. Langdon, right side, inside to Armstrong. Armstrong up top to Logston, swings it off left side, Napier. Napier drives, dumps it off to Armstrong. Armstrong lets the defender go by. It's off the right, missed. Ballard with a rebound for Bethlehem. Out and running go the Eagles. Over the far side, off to Cheek. Cheek into the corner, now to Cook. Cook picks up the dribble. Up to the top of the key and a little stutter step up top by Culver, and the ball will head back towards Grayson County. 6.42 left here in this first half of play, or it's third quarter of play. It is 33-28, Grayson County on top in this ball game. Jack Logston had 11 points in the first half. Spencer Langdon with 10. It was a great start, but they really slowed down after that start. Langdon ball fake drives, dishes off the right side. Basket good by Langdon. He's the leading scorer now with 12 points. Off to that far side of the floor, driving in, up top. 
Swinging it off right side, stepping into the right side three. It is short, rebound on the floor, and it is a foul on the floor on the inside called on Grayson County. It's called on Jack Logston. That is his second, no, sorry, it is a correction. That is on Brody Armstrong. That is his third team's first. And Kate Hanshaw will come into the game for Brody Armstrong. Travis Johnston expressing his displeasure with the call. Click up top to Cheek. Off left wing to Culver. Top of the key, Cheek. Bounce pass right side. Back now to Cheek on the uh, straight away. Into the corner. Deep three by Cook is off the back side. Logston with the rebound. Logston loops it off to Langdon. Langdon down the right side is fouled hard by Cook. Oh, and Cook immediately. At first I thought Cook was going over to like uh, uh it was weird the walk that he was doing, but he was walking over to Langdon to say, hey, I'm sorry, sorry, that uh, I didn't mean to foul you that hard. And Langdon just kind of smiled at him. The way he was walking, I thought he was about to, like, I don't know what I thought. Napier in the near corner, three in and out. Langdon has the loose board, fades it away, shot is blocked on the interior. An outlet pass comes to Ballard as Bethlehem has it. Nice bounce pass, right side, flip shot, good. Cutting down is Cook. 35-30. 5.35 left here in the first half of play. Logs in the corner, lets the defender go by. 15 feet near side, back side of the iron. It's missed. Napier's able to choose, chase down the loose board, though, for Bethlehem. Inside pass deflected and taken away by, Bar by Bethlehem. Bethlehem up the far side of the floor. Jump pass, top of the key. Ballard, three, in and out. Rebound on the floor, though. Cutting down inside. Floater good there by Ballard. Thomas Mudd was able to pick up the loose board and found Ballard cutting down the, the lane. And it is a one possession game now at 35 to 32 with 5.05 to go in the game. Into the corner to Hanshaw. Hanshaw to the right wing to, Log to Langdon. Back inside to Logston. Pass again deflected. The interior passing has not been good today for Grayson. Cheek on the run out. Stolen by Langdon. Grayson County's got numbers. Three on two. Langdon down the right side. Floater. Good. Timeout, Travis Johnston. 4.46 to go here in the third quarter of play. Grayson County leads 37-32. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Grayson County, 37-32, left here in the third quarter of play. They have the lead against Bethlehem. Trying to come away with a good win against a fifth region opponent. Travis Johnston took that timeout, and now it's knocked away, taken away by Haycraft. He's trapped in the corner. Finds it with a bounce pass to Hanshaw. Grayson County, Hanshaw drive down, drives down the right side, blows right past three. Bethlehem to players and lays it in on the right side for his first shot from the field. Hanshaw's got three points in the game. Grayson County has the lead. Over to the far side of the floor, very close to an over and back. Three far side is missed. And a foul on the rebound is called on Caden Hanshaw. His second, team second, and Travis Johnston wants an explanation from the official Joe Jeffries. And seems like the explanation was more than fine. Inside the lane, shot fouled. Logston will pick up the foul, his second, team's third. Two shots coming for Ballard. He's made a home at the free throw line today. This will be his ninth and tenth attempt on the game. He's made his last five. Until then, he misses that. Thornsbury comes back in for Bethlehem. Thornsbury, good football player. He was their leading tackler on defense, also rushed for 267 yards and nine touchdowns. And misses both free throws. Logston comes up with a loose rebound for Grayson County. 4-10 left here in this third quarter of play. It is 39-32, Grayson County on top against Bethlehem. Langdon drives down the right side, fires down to Logston, shot left short, but he's fouled on the floor by Bethlehem. Thornsbury picks up the foul. 
his first, team's third. Logs into the line to shoot two. Where he has been absolutely on fire. And it continues. That's the thing with Jack is he very rarely even touches the net, it touches the rim. It is usually just always perfect for Jack Logston. And right on cue, he misses one. That, I think, was a stretch of 18 straight made by Jack Logston. Grayson County on top, 40 to 32, under four minutes left in the third quarter of play. Tried to pick up a win against Bethlehem. Right side. Top of the key, three is up by Bradley. It is no good. Long rebound chased down by Haycraft. Haycraft down the right lane, goes up with a shot right side, and an offensive foul is going to be called on Landon Haycraft. His second team's fourth. Kobe Martin comes in. Travis Johnston tells Landon Haycraft, don't do anything different. His exact words was, that was a block. Over the far side, Culver weaving through. Culver right to the hole off the right side. Culver just goes coast to coast and lays it in for six points of the game. Langdon at the half court line. He's being trapped. He drives. He throws. It's deflected. And it is Martin in the far corner. Up top to Logston. Logston to the free throw line to Napier. Napier to Logston. Cutting down the lane off the left side. Shot too hard. Rebound tapped off. Hanshaw's got it at the top of the key. Hanshaw drives and is fouled on the play by Bradley. His second team sport. Teams fourth. It'll remain on the floor. Next free throw. Next foul will be free throws for both teams. Zach Bradshaw comes in. Gage Napier comes out. I like that. That it was just changing the inbound man. So <laughs> Zach Bradshaw decided to walk a couple of steps. Bradshaw to Langdon fires inside to Logston. Logston back to Bradshaw. Three near side blocked by Ballard. Logston's got the rebound though. Logston spins around and he's fouled from 12 feet. And Jack Logston will go back to the stripe. Trying to start a new stretch of free throws made in a row. Eagle foul number two, Ballard, Ballard his second, second. Team's, fifth. team's fifth. Ballard's probably got Boston four or five blocks in this game. He's long and lengthy, just a really, really good athlete. Longston to shoot two. Good, first one. Longston up to 13 points in the game. Into the game for Bethlehem is going to be Thomas Mudd. One more coming for Jack Logston is good. He makes them both. 42-34, pass deflected, taken away Hanshaw. Hanshaw, right side shot is good. It rolls in. Getting the roll for Caden Hanshaw. He took the steal, looking like a DB, taking back a pick six. And now Hanshaw fouls at the half court line, and he did not like it. He's third. Team's fifth. Ballard back to the line for two. He made five in a row and just missed two in a row. With 2.52 left in this third quarter of play, that one is good there for Isaiah Ballard. Thornsbury comes back in for Bethlehem, as does Cheek. Hayden Robinson in for Grayson County. Second chance for Ballard. Is no good, backside, Martin picks up another loose rebound for Grayson County, outlet to Langdon. Langdon kicks it off to Bratcher. Bratcher up top now to Martin. Martin onto the right side to Bratcher. back off Martin, left wing Robinson into the far corner, Logston inside to Langdon, Langdon feeds it off Martin, right side shot, good! Nice ball movement for Grayson County and Kobe Martin. He's up to four points in the game. Really like that possession for Grayson County, one of their best of the game, and now Bratcher's gonna pick up the foul on the far side of the floor. For Zach, that'll be his second. Team's fifth, and that was absolutely a foul. The two shots coming for Culver. His first trip to the line today, three of five on the season. Of course, Bethlehem is without one of their best players, Nick Osborne. He averaged 14.4 points a game a season ago. He's a good football player as well. Passed for 970 yards and 10 touchdowns while also rushing for 339 and five touchdowns. Also five interceptions on defense. His teammate Nicholas Culver 
makes both free throws there. It is 46-37, 225 left in the third quarter of play. Langdon, free throw line, Logston cutting down to Martin off the left side, basket good for Kobe Martin. He's got six points and an injury on the play and Ballard is holding his right arm and he says he's okay. Ballard was holding that hand earlier and they tried to get a sub in but they don't have it in time. 48-37, Grayson on top by 11 points, 207 left in the game. Left wing, back off right side, Culver. It's a man in his face, 3-2, Grayson got his own. Bratcher gambles and steals. Run out for Bratcher down the right side, blocked off the backboard though by Bethlehem. Outlet coming on the other side is knocked away and it'll be off of Ballard's leg and it'll go towards Grayson County. That ball rolls all the way out into the hallway. Hayden Robinson, he still hasn't come back yet. There he comes. I mean, that ball had to roll all the way down to where the girls basketball locker room is. One forty-nine left in the third quarter of play. Grayson County has the advantage in the game. Up the near side coming. Right side Martin, right elbow Logston inside to Bratcher. Bratcher fouled shot, right side, count it. He'll go to the line after being fouled. Called on number 12, Thomas Mudd, his third. Back in comes Hayden Cook. Bratcher to the line to try and convert on an and one. He is four of five from the stripe on the season. Thornsbury in, mud out for the Eagles. It is no good, pops all the way out for Zach Bratcher. 50 to 37 with 90 seconds left here in this third quarter of play. Left wing Culver. Off to the right side. Grayson County with a young lineup out on the floor and the pass to the left side is deflected out of bounds by Langdon. And it's gonna go towards Grayson County. 122 left, or rather two, uh, staying with Bethlehem. 122 left in quarter number three. Grayson County leads 50 to 37. Jump pass left wing to Culver. Culver swings it over far side, Bradley. Back now Culver in between the circles. They leave him alone from three. He misses it, Logston rebounded and fouled by either on Culver, on, uh, rather on Thornsbury or on Bradley. It'll be on Bradley, his third. And two shots will come for Jack Logston. Logston has 14 points in this game. He's been very consistent this year. His low point total on the season came against Ohio County when he had 14 in one of Grayson County's better games of the year. Makes the first shot there. Well, of course, Logston had 31 in their win over Edmondson County on Friday. Thomas Mudd re-enters for Bethlehem. Gage Napier will come in for Grayson County. Logston misses the second free throw, so Napier actually is going to remain on there. I think he was coming in for Logston. 14-point Grayson County lead, one minute left in the third quarter of play. Hand off pass right side, left wing Bradley. He's double teamed, now they back off into the 3-2 zone. Inside pass deflected and taken away. Logston taps it off to Langdon. Langdon drives in, dumps it off left side to Bratcher, far corner, Martin, three, got it! Great ball movement by Grayson County. Kobe Martin's got a career high nine points. Cougs on top, 54-37. 35 seconds left in the third quarter of play. Top of the key. We got a handoff now. Will Bethlehem hold for the final shot or what will they do? Right wing, free throw line. Ballard goes up, floater from five feet. The basket's good and he's fouled. Foul called on Robinson, his third. There will be Ballard to the line to try and convert on the end one. 
subs in for Bethlehem. Includes Hayden Clark and I think Thornsbury might have been the other man. <laughs> Zach Bratcher was, was hanging out all alone. And Bethlehem, uh, Clark came into the game and he was looking. He's like, wait a second, where is that guy? His coach had to say, oh, he's standing all the way. And Zach Bratcher laughs and walks back. I think he's saying something to him. He's like, ah, just trying to pull a fast one. Ballard converts on the end one. He's a really nice player. 15 seconds left in quarter number three, 54-40. Martin into the middle to Robinson. Robinson at the free throw line, gives it to Napier. Off to Langdon, right side three is off to the left. Rebound tapped off, Bratcher's got it with four seconds. Bratcher on the left wing, up top to Napier. Napier lets it fly, got it! <laughs> Napier puts in the three right ahead of the gun, and Grayson County leads Bethlehem 57-40. to This is Cougar basketball on K105. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Look around your home, and there's probably something that was made right here in Litchfield. Leggett & Platt is a worldwide corporation making a wide range of products, including sofa sleeper and reclining hardware assemblies here at home. A portion of your Ashley, Lazy Boy, or England furniture might have been made by one of your neighbors. Join the Leggett & Platt team today. We are a one-shift operation with competitive wages. Our motto is, we work hard so you can rest easy. Leggett & Platt is an equal opportunity, affirmative action, veteran and disability employer. Grayson County, 57 to 40. They lead the game here against Bethlehem at the start of the fourth quarter of play. We start the fourth quarter of play, 57-40. Grayson County well in control against the Eagles. It's over on that far side, bounce pass to the top of the key. Back now to Mud in the far corner. Mud drives. Now loops inside to Ballard. Ballard splits defenders and lift, leaves the shot short. Rebounded on the floor and picked up. Left side all alone. Three by Bradley is well short. Bratcher with a rebound for Grayson County. Gives it off now to Langdon. Langdon up the far side of the floor. He speeds up. Jump pass to Bratcher on the far side. Bratcher curls around and back out now to Langdon. Langdon drives the baseline, runs it. Kicks to Robinson. Robinson back to Bratcher. Right side three is short off the front of the iron. Rebounded by Mudd for Bethlehem. Mudd loses his dribble and gains it back. Flips it off now to Culver. Culver inside to Bradley. Spins around with a right hand floater. Doesn't roll in. Martin with another loose board for Grayson County. Kobe Martin has a career high nine points today. He's played really, really well. Feeds it off to Napier, who just hit a three to beat the buzzer at the end of the third quarter. Bratcher thought about the three in the far side. Gives it to Robinson. He'll take the three. It's a little long. Napier with the rebound on the left block. Napier goes up, and his shot is blocked on the inside. Loose ball picked up Langdon on the interior for Grayson. Langdon flips it off to Martin. Three for double digits. It is short. Long rebound knocked out of bounds by Grayson County. Hayden Robinson went over to Travis Johnson. He said he didn't agree with it. Travis Johnson just gave him a slap on the side as if to say, you know, good, good defense, and said we're good. 57-40, Grayson leads 90 seconds into this third quarter of play. Left side, Bradley. Coming with pressure is Grayson. Top of the key, three by Culver is an air ball. Full-fledged substitutions for Grayson. Armstrong, Logston, Haycraft, Hanshaw in. H. Napier will be the lone player that'll stay. You got Napier, Hanshaw, Logston, Haycraft, and Armstrong in for the orange and blue. They'll have the ball in from left to right in those home white jerseys. Hanshaw on the right wing at the free throw line. Bounce pass to Logston. Logston does two ball fakes, top to Napier. Right side Armstrong lets the three fly and puts the three in. Brody Armstrong moves into double figures. He's got 11 points. It's 60 to 40. Grayson County has doubled up. Bethlehem inside the lane, pass deflected. Pick back up and curling it around over to the far side to Mud. 
Mudd drives, shot 18 feet far side, it is missed. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Bethlehem and it'll go towards Grayson County. Napier gets it into Hanshaw, but it's taken away by Bradley. Nice defense by Bradley. Top of the key, Mud Spinning around to the right side, Culver in on Logston. Culver tried to find a player, throws it away, and running it down just before crossing the half-court line was Cook. Off the right side, deep three. Culver is short. Rebound on the floor. Hanshaw, nope, it's poked away. Ballard's got it at the volleyball line. Ballard driving, kicking. Cook, three near side. That one finally drops. For Hayden Cook, he's got eight points in the game. Hanshaw trapped in the backcourt, spinning it around. Breaks the timeline right up the middle. Hanshaw, coast to coast, right side flip, not there. Ballard had enough in it. Here comes a run out for Bethlehem down the right side. Shot is up and good on the right side there by Jack Bradley. 60 to 45, timeout Bethlehem, 5.03 to go. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches, it encourages, it builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where it is Grayson County 60, Bethlehem 45 here in the fourth quarter of play. 5.05 to go in the game. A score update I do have to bring you. Adair County has defeated E-Town 71 to 57 at home tonight. That is a final score there from Columbia. Let's see if we can't find any other scores to bring you as we do the scroll through here. Uh, Christian County leads Bowling Green by three at the half. The Caverna up on the Root County by 10, 62 to 52 at the end of the third quarter of play. Nelson County leads Thomas Nelson 45 to 35, and Edmondson County leads the Bluegrass Blazers home school 46 to 30 at the half. Greenwood all over Ohio County at the half, 36-22. Butler defeats Breck 82 to 50. Those are some of the final scores that we have to bring you. Grayson County up 15, five minutes to go in the game. Hanshaw weaves it down the right side, picks up the dribble, gives it off to Armstrong. Top of the key, Logston. Left side, Haycraft. Haycraft to Logston at the top of the key. Deep three, top of the key, in and out. Rebounded by Cook for Bethlehem. An outlet pass to Culver, and Culver, they're going to say, is fouled by Logston. That is his third. Only the team's first of this fourth quarter of play. His third, team's first. 440 left in the fourth quarter of play. 60 to 45. Cook at the top. Off to Bradley. Bradley right side. Culver back now to Bradley with a no look pass. Bradley lowers the shoulder from seven feet on the left side. Shots missed. Rebound. Out of bounds. Off of Bradley on the inside. Four twenty-nine left in the fourth quarter. Hanshaw with a bounce pass back to Logston. Logston picks and gives it to Hanshaw, who crosses the timeline across the near side of the floor. Hanshaw double teamed to the right elbow to Haycraft, feeds it to Armstrong. Armstrong down to Logston off the left side, can't get the layup. Second chance is a foul. Called by Jack Bradley, that is his fourth. Team's first. Logston was trying to finish off what he started. Cheek will come back into the game for Bethlehem. Coming out is Bradley. Logston into the corner to Langdon. Langdon feeds it off to Logston. Logston spins towards the baseline, floats it in, shots good for Jack Logston. His first points of the fourth quarter of play. Only his second field or his first field goal made in the first half. Curl step inside. Shots missed by Culver. Logston with another loose board for Grayson. Loops it off to Armstrong. Armstrong blows right by down the right side. Good for Brody Armstrong. Armstrong's got 13 in the game. 64-45. Grayson County well in control of this game with 3.30 to go.
Up top to Cheek. Left wing, back now to Cheek. Riding in with a bounce pass. Back up to Cheek. Cheek inside, spinning around, and a dunk attempt is missed on the inside by Ballard. Rebounded by Haycraft for Grayson County. In between the circles to Langdon. He'll pull up a three in transition. Nothing but net for Spencer Langdon. He's got 17. And the daggers are sharpening here at Grayson County High School, 67-45. Left wing into the corner. It is to Thornsbury, top of the key, stepping into the three. It's off the back of the iron. Ball knocked around and picked up on the left side by Cheek for the Eagles. Top of the key, left alone, Culver three. He gets the roll. That ball touched every part of the rim before dropping in. And a timeout will be taken on the floor by Bethlehem. It is 67-48. It is a full timeout with 2.35 to go. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School, 67 to 48. The Cougars lead, 2.35 to go in the game. Out of the timeout, it will be Grayson County basketball. Probably, I mean, it'd be a heck of a comeback for Bethlehem to come back. More of a foul in the backcourt whistled on Bradley. That'll be five for Jack Bradley. He'll foul out of the game with seven points. Immediately off the bench comes Hayden Clark. No foul shots coming there as that's only the team's second here of this quarter of play. 2.33 left here in the game. You have a bounce pass into Hanshaw. Hanshaw loops it off Logston. Angles back towards the near side. Curls over to the far side. On the left side, he backs it off. Hanshaw has it in between the circles with 2.22 to go in the game. Hanshaw off to the right side to Log Langdon. Langdon curls. Layup right side, left short on the flip. Rebound on the floor by Culver. Culver up the far side in transition. Armstrong tried to get the steal. Off left side, now back to Culver. Right side three, good for Culver. Culver started to heat up in this fourth quarter of play and immediately kicks the ball out of bounds off the inbounds. 2.02 to go, Grayson counting up by 16 in this game. 67 to 51. Logston into Langdon. Langdon weaving through with a bounce pass off to Hanshaw, then walks with the backcourt. He did. He did. Took the step. And that's one of those that Caden probably didn't even realize that he did what he did, but it, he, he absolutely did. I'll, you know, that's a good call. Official Mike Berry right there on top of it. Not much going to get by him. Far corner three up and short. Long rebound chased down by Hanshaw. Hanshaw with a run out, down the right side, flips it up, basket good, daggers out. Grayson County's gonna win the ball game. 69-51, 1.34 to go, and a foul on the far side called on Hanshaw. That'll be his fourth. <laughs> Travis Johnston went down to all fours, put his face into the, into the and you realize that when you're up by 17 there's or 18, there's no reason in complaining because what do you have to complain about? You're up. About 90 seconds left. I have one thing that I wanted to mention to you. You know, Bethlehem has an interesting connection or uh, an, an interesting thing that not a lot of schools in the state of Kentucky can say that they have. As there's over to the far side, it's Crippen who's into the game for Bethlehem. 
Off left wing, Clark into the corner, feeds it off to Mudd, is three off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound tapped off, loose ball. Armstrong's got it, gives it off to Hanshaw. Hanshaw on the left side, layup good for Caden Hanshaw. He's got nine points. 105 to go in the game, 71-51. Travis Johnston gonna go to the bench. Crippen into the far corner. Up at the top of the key, the defender goes by. Left wing three up and good. Put in the three there by Clark. Timeout on the floor taken by Bethlehem. Clark puts in the three, full subs on each side. Bryson Lambert, you've got Kobe Martin, you've got Kyle Higdon, you've got uh, Jaden Pearson for Grayson. Chase Balnock re-enters for Bethlehem. Mason Patrick, Easton Jones, Ben Garrett. Uh, let's see, we mentioned Crippen was already in and uh, he, they joined Clark. 50 seconds left, Bonnock on that far side of the floor. It's a 17 point game, down to the right, right side. Basket good for Pierce. His first career basket. 72-54, 40 seconds to go in the game. Off to the right side. Driving in is Crippen, Crippen in the lane. Shots good and he's fouled by Grayson County. Foul called on Bryson Lambert, his first. Team's third. Basket was good by Crippen. He's 0 of 2 on free throws this season. But Bardstown or Bethlehem is interesting because their boys and girls teams have different nicknames. They're one of only a few in the state of Kentucky that has that. As the free throws missed, Bonnock with the rebound is their girls team are the Banshees, and obviously they are the Eagles. Foul on the backcourt on Bethlehem. It is called on 14, Easton Jones, his first. I'm trying to think, the only other one that comes to mind is uh, Ashland Blazer. Their boys team is are the Tomcats, their girls team are the Kittens. And But by, you got Bethlehem, who are the Eagles and the Banshees. Ball knock, no look pass to Martin. Grayson County gonna be more than okay with just dribbling this one out and coming away with a big win, crossing the 70 point mark yet again. Nine seconds and counting left to play, and I like the uh, defense there from Easton Jones. He's gonna make Chase dribble it out. They give it off to Martin, who just sets it on the floor. They're gonna shake hands, and Grayson County wins the game tonight by a final score of 73 to 56 against Bethlehem. We'll come back, jump into the fifth quarter show after this. Grayson County a winner. They are now four and two on the season. This is Cougar basketball on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. For the more than 1 million people living with Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson's Foundation celebrates movement at Moving Day, a movement toward life-saving resources, movement toward advancing research and care, movement toward a better life. We care. We fight. We move to beat Parkinson's. Move with us at movingdaywalk.org. No matter what you're up against, we have your back. We, we are, are United, United Way. Way. We, we are, are neighbors helping neighbors. neighbors. In communities around the world, when disaster strikes, we get you back on your feet. We help children build brighter futures. We've been here for over 135 years. But now, our work is more important than ever. Join, Join us. Join, Join your neighbors. neighbors. Join, Join United, United Way. Way. The doctor said I had a 29% chance to find a blood stem cell donor. But I knew you were out there. And when we matched, it was the best day ever. Dear donor, your blood stem cells saved me from leukemia. Thank you forever and ever and ever. Experience the true joy of saving a life at BeTheMatch.org. We had an MRI, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He looked terrified. And he's like, we gotta operate now. It just all changed. 
Life changed. Bryce is one of the 47 children per day who are diagnosed with cancer. Today's treatments aren't enough. To watch the rest of Bryce's story, visit childrenscancer.org slash story. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're gonna help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. I'm not here to fire you up. If you're not already fired up, you shouldn't be in this room. If this victory isn't worth all you have to give, then leave. But now, right now is your chance to be a part of a victory the world will remember forever. <laughs> victory over cancer. This victory isn't just happening. It isn't inevitable. What does hope mean? Now is our time, your time. You may save someone you love. Time is very precious. Today's cancer research is tomorrow's victory, a victory that is there for the taking. Grab it. How was that? Now that was a great halftime speech. Let's go win. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches. It encourages. It builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are winners today by a final score of 73 to 56. We're joined now by the Johnstons, <laughs> we can say that here. Uh, someone who's probably a much better interview. <laughs> she sees herself on camera there. Uh, Coach, I think that uh, you, uh, 73 to 56, I mean the biggest thing is, is you won the game. I, I think you know you started off great and then that second quarter, it wasn't pretty I think it's I, I don't know really though I don't know that it was necessarily purely ugly it wasn't necessarily pretty but then you bounce back into, into that second half what does that bounce back say into the second half where you really just took control of the game well the, the biggest thing was Spencer um, Spencer came out with about 630 left in the first uh, or in the second quarter and um, I'm not so sure that they uh, we may score two more points the rest of the tr time there uh, until we put him back in. Uh, Jack got us going early. Um, he fell in love with his three a little too much. We liked him to go inside a little bit more. Um, uh, he, he did fine, and, but, but Spencer, Spencer was a dog tonight. and um, he, he got us into everything, got other guys shots, made three or four threes. I can't remember which one it was. Um, three. Three. Um, you, you know, that number two. We had a lot of good shot opportunities. Number two is a freak. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, you're probably – this won't surprise you. He won the state championship in the high jump last year. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, he closed out on Zach one. He took one step off the block, and he still closed out and got a block on it. So, uh, he probably had five or six tonight. That's hard to uh, – I don't – I'm not so sure anybody in the region is that big plus that athletic. I mean, I guess Rice is uh, at Butler County. Uh, that kid's a little bit more athletic than the kid at Davis. Uh, but it's he, – he I'm would, trying to think. I can't think of anybody. So, so, so we were kind of limited in where we needed to go with the ball on, on offense, but Spencer was able to penetrate and get us whatever we wanted. So that was, that was the biggest change was um, getting Spencer out there and then not fouling. We couldn't, have any, uh, we couldn't have any rhythm. We fouled so much and they got to the free throw line so much that we could never get any rhythm. I think the in, in, if there's one thing that I think you probably weren't happy with, and I think even at one point there uh, you called a timeout, I think, to complain about it was, was your interior passing. Yes. I thought yes. at times. Now, is that credit to, to, to them on def defensively, or you think that – and I know you haven't watched the film or anything, but is that something that kind of concerns you a little bit more? 
not really. It was just a couple guys being soft with it. You know, it was they, they weren't uh, being strong. They caught it, and they were standing straight up, and they tried to throw with their legs locked instead of being down in a stance. And uh, and then the biggest thing is making a bounce pass. We wouldn't we can't make we wouldn't make a bounce pass. And Spencer got away with a couple, but he he needs to learn how to bounce it, uh, especially against those big, long, athletic guys that that we played tonight. Uh, you mentioned Spencer had a good game, but I think another guy that stood out gives you a career high nine was was Kobe. Yes, yeah. Uh, he had, uh, I mean, he hit a three, and then at the end of the first quarter, that was as good of a little. I can't remember. It was it was a missed three, wasn't it? And he got the yeah. rebound and flipped yeah. it up and yeah. just beat the buzzer. You mentioned, I know, last year after a game, I, it might have been one that he came in and, and gave you some minutes left. It was maybe a game you were winning or, or not, and you said he's the best athlete in in the, on the team, and you're really starting to see just he is a freak athlete he played to it tonight too uh, the last couple games uh, he hadn't played to it um, he played a little bit timid a little bit straight up and, and he's a kid that just has to go he's not um, no offense to him he's not really a thinker uh, he, he he just goes and that's what we need him to do is go and that's not a bad thing uh, no it's not we, we need some guys like that now we have to have some thinkers I, I'm having a hard time pinpoint who our thinkers are um, Gage <laughs> yeah Gage and Landon probably um, but, but he, he was in the right spots. He dove. We talked at halftime about catching it in the middle and looking opposite and diving opposite because they were covering it with the backside uh, forward. And, um, and he, he was one guy that did it, and that's what got him some points there. I think Caden, you keep seeing him on those long rebounds. Yeah. That he, you really saw it was, it was Ohio, was it not, where yes, it kind of yes. really, it, it, against Bullet Central and Breck, it wasn't necessarily a huge thing. But I think over these last couple of games, has that been something he's just learned, or is it just more the balls finding him? Uh, he, he has a knack for it. and You know, I really like him at the bottom of our zone because it means he's in the middle of our diamond at half court, and he's, our, he's the strongest player on the team. So he, he's going to be able to beat and bang with some bigger guys and get some rebounds. Uh, but I also like him at the wing spot because those long rebounds, when they shoot threes, he gets it, and uh, he's faster than just about everybody we play. So... Um, I got onto him a little bit in the fourth quarter because I don't know how many rebounds he had, but I didn't feel like it was enough. Uh, and then you saw uh, how active he was defensively there at the end, and, and he did a good job responding. Coming up on Friday, you have a game against uh, Thomas Nelson. It's a team that this Bethlehem team beat uh, last time they played 54-21. to How do you make sure your team, when they see 54-21 and they see you all won by – almost 20 tonight that they don't look and say this game we should be a cakewalk because I, I'm a firm believer any given night you yeah know. Uh, well I mean as, as many threes as we shoot and as fast as we play and as many threes as uh, chances that we do give up and our horrendous rebounding um, every night's a dog gonna be a dog fight um, so we have to everybody has to be ready to go and and the biggest motivator is we got 12, 13 guys over there that can play. Uh, so if you don't want to play tonight and you want to walk through and go through the motions, then I'll find somebody else who can. So um, that's that's always the best motivator is, is the bench. And um, if guys are lackadaisical and, and, and playing, um, not necessarily to the level of the competition, but to the scores uh, that they've seen, then um, we will get somebody else that can. Coach, I appreciate it. Does she have any questions? Or? Uh, no, she may touch her stuff in a second, so we better well, get okay. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. We won't see you on Friday, but we'll be with you, I guess, in Paducah for game one. All right. We'll see you then. That's Thanks. head coach Travis Johnson. Cougars win tonight, 73-56. We'll take a break. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters, if having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Hi, I'm Dr. Ashley Gabbard, internal medicine physician with Owensboro Health. I'd like to talk with women 40 and over about having annual mammograms, even if there is no history of breast cancer in your family. Early detection provides women a strong advantage in fighting breast cancer. Ask your primary care provider for a referral and schedule your screening online at owensborohealth.org slash mammogram. 
governor has declared a state of emergency. An evacuation is now underway as the storm approaches. The National Weather Service has issued a warning as it monitors the storm. The following counties that are fortunate to be Convoy of Hope is ready to help you prepare for the next storm. Visit convoy.org slash prepare. Connection builds community. It grows the minds of future citizens and leaders. Connection teaches, it encourages, it builds confidence through relationships, through partnerships, through small daily acts, through high impact programs at all levels. Connection says together, we can. The one thing I know about Grayson County Schools, when you get the right people going in the right direction, anything's possible. We are GC Connected. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School where the Cougars are winners tonight against Bethlehem by the final score of 73 to 56. Try to see if we can't run down a score or two from around the region as we do our good old scroll through here. First off, it's got a refresh. Um, one score to bring you, Adair County defeats E-Town tonight by the final score of 71 to 57. That loss for Grayson County looks even better and better. Caverna beats LaRue County 74 to 72, final score. At the end of the third quarter of play, Edmondson County leads the Bluegrass Blazers 62 to 41. Ohio County and Greenwood are tied at 52 with four minutes left in that game. Owensboro leads Muhlenberg County 30 to 17 at the half. Um, and let's see here as we do the scroll through here. Butler County and Girls defeated Muhlenberg County 56 to 47. McLean on top of Apollo 59 to 54. Those are a few of the scores that we have for you from around the region. We'll take a break, wrap it up after this. Again, your final score, Grayson County 73-56 over Bethlehem. This is Cougar Basketball on K105. Are you looking for the best building materials in Litchfield? Look no further than Future Designs Building Materials. The builder's choice on Quarry Road has everything you need to build your dream home. Jim writes, I'm so glad I came to Future Designs for my new roof. The staff was so helpful and knowledgeable, and they made sure I got the right materials for my needs. Thanks, Jim. Future Designs is more than just a building materials store. Future Designs Building Materials on Quarry Road in Litchfield. FDBM.net. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. When I found out my son was addicted to opiates, I didn't know where to turn. Now I know there's help, and you can call, whether you're a family member, a sibling, or the person with the addiction. And the number is 1-833-8-KY-HELP. Call for the resources. They're going to help you with compassion and care and the knowledge of what's available to get you the help you need. Welcome back here to Grayson County High School, where Grayson County wins 73-56. to This is the fifth quarter show here on K105. Right now on the scoring from this game, Isaiah Ballard led the way for Bethlehem and led all scorers with 18 points. 14 for Nicholas Culver, 7 for Jack Bradley, 6 for Thomas Mudd, 5 for, Hay uh, for Hayden Cook, 3 Hayden Clark, 2 Jackson Crippen, and 1 for Emmanuel Cheek. For Grayson County, it was 17 each for Jack Logsdon and Spencer Langdon. 13 for Brody Armstrong, 9 apiece for Kobe Martin and Caden Hanshaw, 5 for Gage Napier, and rounding out the scoring was 2 points each for Zach Bratcher and Jaden Pierce getting his first career basket. A uh, reminder, uh, later on this week, if you saw the original schedule, which I guess no one has seen our schedule because that's only our, uh, our crew has seen the, the individual schedule. We were scheduled to be here on Thursday as the Lady Cougars was to play McLean County, and then on Friday we were going to be with the boys as they traveled to Thomas Nelson. Well, the Lady Cougars game was moved from Thursday to Friday. So because of that, we'll be with the Lady Cougars on Friday.
Cougar boys, uh, good luck to them as they travel to Thomas Nelson. That'll be a 7 central time start on Friday there from the northern side of Bardstown. We won't have the coverage of that game. We'll try to see if we can't bring you some updates, if possible, from that. Instead, we'll be with the Lady Cougars that evening. Um, and then next week, we will be here on Monday. So Lady Cougars will take on Owensboro, and then we'll be with them, uh, with the Cougar boys next on Wednesday of next week as we're going to make the trip to Panuka as the Cougar boys take on Carlisle County at 7 o'clock there at St. Mary's Paducah. So that's kind of a look at the schedule here over these next oh, 10 days or so. That'll wrap up our coverage here tonight. I want to make, sh make sure to thank our K105 Digital Productions crew for their hard work. Your camera operator was Abby Hallett, and your director was Trey Cook. So tonight where Grayson County picks up a 73-56 win against Bethlehem, this is Sam Gormley saying so long, everyone.